Hello, my name is Lynn Gillespie, and I will be your guide to discover the 12 high-performance garden characteristics with weekly training videos. A high-performance garden is one of the most fun, productive, and organic gardening experiences you will ever have. A garden that is enjoyable, weed-free, productive, and so very easy to achieve. Hello, I'm Lynn Gillespie, organic farmer and creator of the Abundance Garden course. This week we are focused on the high performance garden characteristic number one, harmony with nature. Today we are going to learn about protecting our vegetable plants with a very special beneficial insect, the parasitic wasp. Don't worry, this wasp is so small, it's about the size of a gnat, that it can't sting us and it's not interested in us. The first characteristic of a high performance garden is to be in harmony with nature. To use chemicals on your food is not the way to be in harmony. But sometimes the pests show up and you need to know how to control the pests so you get a crop. One way is to declare war on the bad bugs with good bugs that will eat the bad bugs. We do this in our gardens with several different species of predators. The parasitic wasp is one of the best predators of the aphid. The other beneficial insects we use are lacewing, nematodes, ladybugs, spider mite predators, and praying mantis. When we use beneficial insects to patrol our gardens, we do not need any chemicals and we save a lot of time by not spraying. Okay, this is my box of the parasitic wasp that we got in the mail. We just order them online and they come in a, a box with the UPS. They come in usually second day air because they got to get here pretty fast. And the two wasps that we use are uh, Aphidius colmani and Aphidius irvi. And I call them waspy buddies because they're my buddies and they're little bitty wasps. So in the packaging there's uh, usually some packing and they always send them with these uh, little cold packs because they're trying to keep them fairly dormant um, during shipment. And this is what they are. And I believe in here, yeah, there's 500 in here. And I don't know if you can see through there. You can just see little bitty flies in there. Let me see if I can get a few of them out for you. Now, they won't hurt me at all. Um, I'm way too big for them. And they're not really interested in me because I am not an aphid. I might be a pest, but I am not an aphid. Okay, can you see them kind of bounce around here in my hand? Um, oh, they're flying off to do their job. So the little guys, those are uh, Kulmani, and the bigger ones are Irvi. And I'm going to put the lid back on this because I want some of these in another building. So basically what you do is you just take this and you just shake it and um, the wasps come out. And also what we have in here is the mummified aphids. So I'll tell you how that happens. The cool thing about the aphidias is how they operate. So what the wasp does is it flies around and finds an aphid that it likes. Once it finds the aphid it likes, it stings the aphid with its ovipositor and deposits an egg inside the aphid body. The egg hatches out and then the larvae starts to eat the inside of the aphid and eventually that kills the aphid and then the larvae cuts a slit in the bottom of the aphid and attaches the aphid to the plant, um, to the leaf, with a silk. And then the larvae also will put the silk all the way around the aphid body and that turns it into a mummy. So it looks like a little, uh, I call them like little golden beebees. They're little silvery gold colored little mummies of aphids. Okay, so inside of the mummified aphid, the larvae pupates, and when it has matured, it cuts a hole in the back of the aphid, and then it flies out as an adult wasp. And the wasp will live for about two to three weeks. It actually, the only food that it consumes is the sticky honeydew that comes out of the back of an aphid. So basically, it eats sticky aphid poop. And the wasp can sting up to about 300 aphids before the end of its lifetime in the two to three week period. And so the cycle just goes round and round. It's pretty cool. Um, 
the Phidias irvi, which is the larger of the two parasitic wasps, it takes about 19 days for it to go through its uh, cycle inside the aphid, and the colmani, which is the smaller one, takes about 14 days to go through its cycle. Yeah. Okay, so Aphidias colmani is native to North America. It's one of our uh, parasitic wasps that we have here. And Aphidias irvi, which is the larger one, is native to Europe. And the uh, smaller colmani likes the smaller green aphids because they're sensitive to the aphid size. And the irvi likes the bigger aphids, the, like the large red ones. So we go ahead and order both in here so that we can release uh, irvi and colmani so that we can get rid of large and small aphids. One of the things about aphids that you may not know is that the ants will farm aphids. Ants will actually take aphids in the fall down into their burrow and, and tend to them through the winter because the ants like the sticky residue that comes out of the back of aphids, aphid poop basically. And then what they'll do is in the spring, they'll bring the aphids back up and put them back on the plants. And so sometimes it's hard to get rid of the cycle of aphids because the ants are farming them. So one of the great things to do is if you have this reoccurring um, process is to go ahead and get some aphidias. Uh, we release ours in three different stages. So we'll release some week one and then week three and then week five so that we have overlapping um, generations of the aphidias and they will pretty much take care of the aphids. It's pretty neat. Uh, mostly the aphidias really like the greenhouse climate. They like the little higher humidity. Um, but I have seen them migrate. Ours will migrate outside and will be on our crops that are outside. So it's kind of neat to see that. I don't necessarily release them outside. And the other thing I've seen is that the aphidias will winter over in my greenhouses. I don't know exactly where that happens, um, but in the springtime when I start to see some aphids, I will actually see some of the aphidias flying around in the room too. So that's pretty neat. But every year I always buy a few new ones just so that uh, we keep control of the crops. It's a pretty amazing thing to have them here in the place. And what I love about it is that once the aphidias are on the job, I really don't have to worry about the aphids much throughout the rest of the season. So it's a great way to just keep track of your crops without having to do all the extra work. Aphidias are amazing predators. If you are experiencing a reoccurrence of aphids every year, you can break the cycle by bringing in a crop of aphidias. Remember to identify your aphids before you order because aphidias are picky about the aphids that they will parasitize. Want access to more videos like this? Click the link in the description below this video to join the High Performance Garden community for free. Community members receive weekly high performance garden video trainings, articles, and trade secrets delivered directly to your inbox. Do you know anyone else who is frustrated and struggling with their garden? Share this video so they can begin to transform their garden into a high performance garden too. They'll thank you later. If you want to transform your garden into a high performance garden in one season, you can enroll in the Abundance Garden course the only gardening course where you can garden step by step with your gardening coach. Click the link in the description below this video to learn more about the Abundance Garden course. If you have a topic you would like us to make a video about, please send us an email. Or if you have a gardening question, you can also email us at thelivingfarm@tds.net. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. May your garden be easy, fun, productive, and always organic.